video is about rate theory and von Diemter equation. There are two theories of chromatography. One is the old theory that is plate theory and the modern theory is rate theory. So the rate theory provides a more realistic explanation of the processes that takes place inside a chromatographic column. We know that from the plate theory that there, uh, there is equilibrium and the equilibrium of the solute between the stationary and mobile phase is fast. While in rate theory, the equilibrium will be established, but it will take some time. So this is the difference of rate theory and plate theory in which the equilibrium is established fast in plate theory, while in rate theory, it will take some time. So it takes into account the time taken by the solute molecule to equilibrate between the stationary and mobile phase unlike the plate model which assume that the equilibrium is infinitely fast. When the solute elutes out of the column, the band shape is affected by the rate of elution. So uh, it will depend upon the rate of elution of the solute particles, whether it will uh, remove from the column, it will elude from the column fast or slow. The main factor is the rate of elution. There are various mechanisms that contribute to broadening of the band. So this rate of illusion, different rate of illusion will result in the broadening of band and it is explained by the von Diemter equation. So von Diemter equation, the plate height is proportional to the variance of the chromatographic band. So the smaller the plate height, the narrow will be the band, which means more will be the number of plates. There are different factors which are responsible for band broadening and the one Diemter equation tell us how the column and the flow rate affect the plate height. So this is the one Diemter equation that is height equivalent of theoretical plate. It is equal to A plus B divided by mu plus C mu. Where mu is the linear flow rate and A, B and C are constant for a given column and stationary phase. Now changing the A, B and C of the column, the column efficiency will be changed. The von Diemter equation says that there is band broadening mechanism that are proportional to the flow rate, inversely proportional to the flow rate and independent of the flow rate. If we look at this equation, here it is uh, the height or we can say the band broadening, it is proportional to the uh, flow rate. In this case, in case of B divided by mu, it is inversely proportional to the flow rate. While in case of A, there is no mu, there is no flow rate, which means that the band broadening will be independent of the flow rate. First is term A, that is added diffusion or multiple part. So a process that leads to peak broadening due to presence of multiple flow paths through a packed column. This is a packed column. If we look at the particle size of the, this packed column that is used in the packing, some are very large size particles, some are small size particles. So this will produce a multiple path available for the solute molecule. So the solute molecule take different path at random while passing through the column and this will lead to the broadening of the peak because different path length in the packed column are of different lengths. So we will take three components, one, two or three. Three solute molecules will get eluted from this column like this. If we look at one, the path available for one will be free path. So it will elute it first and it will produce the first portion of the peak. Second, the longer path available for particle two. So it will produce the second portion and longest path available for particle three. So it will produce the last portion of the peak. So this will result in peak broadening. So to minimize the, uh, so minimize term A, reduce the particle size of the packing material and the packing of the column should be uniform. 
so particle size should be small for the packing of the column and there will be uniform packing note that term a is not applicable to open tubular or capillary column in packed column a would be constant for all values of u and would appear horizontal line if you look at this diagram there is the a term will be the horizontal line which mean that it is independent of the flow rate b term that is longitudinal diffusion band broadening due to the diffusion of solute along the length of the column in a flowing mobile phase so we will uh, elute some solute particles and the band of this solute particle will be x if it is eluted as such it will produce a band width of x but this is not the case when it is moving forward in the column there is diffusion of solute particles takes place and the width of the band will be increase that is x dash so the x dash will be more than x the degree of band broadening due to the longitudinal diffusion depends upon the diffusion of the solute more will be the diffusion of solute more will be the band broadening and the flow rate of the solute through the column more will be the flow rate less will be the band broadening as the anode is passing through the column it diffuses outward just just like in this case outward towards the edges of the column hence the concentration of the analyte is always more at, at the center as compared to the edges so the concentration of the analyte will be more in the center and it will diffuse towards the edges so the concentration of the analyte will be less at the edges and this will lead to the band broadening if particle size eluted as such just like in x so it will produce a narrow peak while the particle size that are diffuses towards the edges if it is eluted from the column then it will produce a peak broadening if the velocity of the mobile phase is high then the anode will spend less time in the column which will reduce the effect of longitudinal diffusion so we will take the mobile phase at high rate we will introduce the mobile phase with high velocity so the anode molecule will spend less time so there will be less time for longitudinal diffusion and the peak broadening so the from this graph the b term it is inversely proportional to the flow rate or uh, linear flow velocity of the mobile phase c term that is resistance to mass transfer from from plate theory we know that the solute particle will get equilibrated between the stationary and mobile phase and that equilibrium will be established fast while in case of rate theory the solute particle also get equilibrated between the solute stationary and mobile phase but it will take certain amount of time to be established so the analyte takes a certain amount of time to equilibrate between the stationary phase and the mobile phase so if we want to elute certain amount of analyte with the help of mobile phase so this anode or solute particle will get equilibrated between the mobile phase and the stationary phase if the velocity of the mobile phase is high and the anode has strong affinity towards the stationary phase so there are two cases if the velocity of the mobile phase is high or the solute particle has strong affinity towards the stationary phase then the portion of the anode in the mobile phase will move ahead a portion of the anode in the stationary phase so it will results in this case so there are some particle that will lag behind the mobile phase because the interaction of the solute with the stationary phase is high and the mobile phase velocity is high so 
it will take some time to equilibrate of between the stationary and mobile phase and that time is not available because the velocity of the mobile phase is high so it will lag behind some of the solute particle in the stationary phase if we look at the broadening of this area that is less and in which the particles are lag behind it is broader so it will produce a broader peak which means that it will produce a peak broadening as compared to the first case this will lead to the band broadening the higher the velocity of the mobile phase more will be the band broadening so the velocity of the mobile phase is high it will move forward uh, with high rate with high velocity and the equilibrium time is not available so it will create a peak broadening the degree of the band broadening due to the stationary phase mass transfer depends on the retention and diffusion of the solute particle the solute particle retention if it is more or less it will depend upon the mass transfer or the velocity of the mobile phase the flow rate of the mobile phase through the column the velocity of the mobile phase will be high then the broadening will be high if it is less then the time available for equilibrium will be more the kinetics of interaction between the solute and the stationary phase more the interaction the of solute with the stationary phase more will be the broadening the c term can reduce by decreasing the stationary phase content film thickness in case of capillary column reducing the column radius and increasing the temperature with the help of increasing temperature the shifting of the solute particle towards the mobile and stationary phase will be high so there will be high rate of establishing equilibrium if we look at the graph for c term velocity of the mobile phase will be high then it will produce a peak broadening now combining all these terms a b and c this is for a this is for b this is for c if we combine all these terms for a term for b term and c term we will get a combined graph that is a plus b plus c and that is the von diemter equation curve that is height equivalent of the vertical plate it is equal to a plus b divided by mu plus c mu